My name is Mary Schultes and I'm here to talk about mycobacterium tuberculosis susceptibility testing. The gold standard for mycobacterium susceptibility testing is called the method of proportion and in that method you're looking for 1% or greater of the population of the organism that is resistant to the drug. If you have that then the drug is considered resistant. Here at the clinic we use a method that um, is sort of based on the method of proportion, but it, it runs on our um, the Midget 960 machine. Um, here at the clinic, we test uh, the critical concentrations of the three uh, three of the sire drugs. We test uh, isoniazid or INH, rifampin, and ethambutol. We tested the critical concentrations, which is the um, concentration that will tell you if the organism is um, resistant or susceptible. Uh, if in the case of INH it is uh, resistant to the critical concentration, we can test at a higher concentration and that is, um, will give you, uh, sorry, that is used to profile the degree of resistance in the population of organisms that you have. Um, Rifampin only has one level and uh, the Thamutol we would have to send out because um, the Becton Dickinson um, midget system does not have a high level of Thamutol kit available. The midget um, cri uh, critical concentrations are slightly lower than the method of proportion um, critical concentrations and that's because um, the company uh, does not want to have any false susceptible results. Um, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we uh, have very little MDR or multi-drug resistant TB. That would be uh, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis that is resistant to the two main drugs that we use, which is INH and rifampin. And happily, we have never had extensively drug resistant uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is resistant to INH and rifampin, the fluoroquinolones, and um, at least one of the injectable um, second-line drugs, which would be amikacin, capriomycin, or canamycin. I can show you uh, the test and, and basically what we're doing. Um, Uh, this is our, our midget system, and this would be the control. You always have a control. This would be the two with the INH, the rifampin, and the ethambutol at critical concentrations. We would add our working dilution of um, mycobacteria to uh, each of the drug wells. We would then dilute the working dilution 1 to 100, and we would add an, an equal amount to the control well. We would then put it on the machine and allow it to read. After we set up the TB, um, Susceptibility testing, it takes between 4 and 14 days for the machine to read. And as soon as the control uh, reaches um, the critical level, then it will read all the drug um, tubes and you will get whether it's sensitive or resistant. And this is an example of the printout that we will get. This is the control, the growth control, and this is, um, these are growth units. And the midget system reads um, fluorescence and um, converts it to growth units and you can see for each of the drug units uh, this is our um, the control that we use the mycobacterium 2729 uh, 27294 and you can see it is sensitive to all uh, three of the uh, critical concentrations of the drugs and uh, that is what it should be we always run controls when we run TB susceptibility testing. Um, if there is any um, thought that we have contamination, then we would repeat it. Also in the regimen of TB susceptibility testing is um, a drug called pyrazinamide or PCA. Uh, we do not do that, this at this time, but we are working to bring it up. And um, the difference with PCA is the, um, the drug works at a lower pH than the organism grows at. So we have to have special media and it 
that uh, testing can take between 4 and 21 days. And we hope to bring it up soon.